Hello and welcome to the 8th round of the 2016 PCC Cup Series season here at the 8 Bowl Speedway constructed just outside of Los Angeles, California. Starting on the pole in his second career pole and second pole of the season is Alex Phillips, Barney Ward on his outside, Tom Wilson starting in third place, Mark Burt there, good qualifying effort for him. He is in fourth. Cale Bernfart Jr. has his worst uh, super speedway start of the season. He starts in sixth. Uh, James Hewitt on the inside of row number four. And his points rival, uh, Ike Durbin, has a good qualifying effort. He starts on the inside of row five. Tom Delgado and Louis Ballard all starting on the inside of their row. So three Manicore engineering cars in a row. Uh, Gaspar D'Souza continues his good points haul here. Uh, starting on the outside of row number eight. Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer in second in points, starting on the outside of row number nine. As we go further through the field, you'll notice there Greg Woodard starting on the outside of row number 11. Uh, his team is not looking very good. They're in relegation right now. There's Barry Juvenal looking to revitalize a pretty bad season. John Jefferson on the inside of row number 14. Uh, Lenny Jacobs, surprised he didn't qualify better. He's on the inside of row 15. But then again, most of the uh, Paloma Autosport cars uh, did not qualify very well. And as we get towards the rear of the field, we get to our usual suspects at the back, Ryan Matthews, uh, Team Australia Racing. There's Matt Brinson uh, making his second start of the season, Chris Benson, Ramsey Cockner, and locking out the r last row is Nice Cock Racing with Daniel Sharp and Jerry Myatt. And with that, it's go, go, go. Green flag is out as Alex Phillips brings the field down into turn number one. Barney Ward on his outside, already starting to fall back just a little bit. Alex Phillips has Tom Wilson there on the inside, his teammate. And Wilson's going to give him a good shove, and that's going to separate the first two from Barney Ward and now James Hewitt taking over third spot. Johnson Racing has an impeccable super speedway package, and they're really showing it here right now as Alex Phillips, who won the pole and the race at Talladega, looking to do so here at the 8 Bull Super Speedway in California. We're just outside Los Angeles here. And, uh, oh, that's Lenny Jacobs into the wall in lap number two. He tank slaps it, and he's just stuck against it. Something must be wrong with that car. As he, the Super Speedway expert, as he calls himself, he made his first career start at New York Auto Ring in 2011. He's going to fall all the way back to the back of the pack, even behind the nice cock racing car. So... Uh, I don't think we're going to be seeing Lenny Jacobs in victory lane today. He was pretty high in points coming into this race. As uh, you can see, the field's already starting to get just a little spread out on lap number four. Here is Ike Durbin running in 14th place, having a pretty strong showing, honestly, early on. I uh, didn't quite expect this from the Manticore Engineering guys, but they've really got to hang on this uh, track. As his main points rival, who is over a full race behind him in points, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer running just two positions behind him, having another strong run. Alina Lazareva is going to hit the wall now on lap number five. And uh, Alina Lazareva, the 2014 series champion, has just had an awful... Oh, that was a close call with Akio Gifu, though. Uh, has just had an awful season. She's... Uh, I don't even think she's cracked the top 40 in points at this point. As uh, she will stay with the main pack, however, but it... It's still not looking very good for Elena Lazerva. By lap six, the field spread out just about single file all the way through, and Tom Wilson's going to take advantage of this and take the lead on the inside of his teammate Alex Phillips. Louis Villard helping him out in the eight car there. That's a Manicore engineering car, and he's going to take the lead and put a pretty decent gap on everyone else. Tom Wilson, the championship caliber test driver, drove for, oh, what is, uh, what is Cale Bernfart Jr.? you're doing back there. He went all the way to the inside while well, Lenny Jacobs pit uh, to get that damage repaired on the left side and that's going to put him out of contention here early on. Lap 9 and Louis Ballard's going to make a move on the inside of Tom Wilson who went high and that's going to be the first time that a non-Johnson racing car has led this race and look at that run that Louis Ballard got on the inside. He's even gapping Tom Wilson now so Manticore Engineering's really gotten their stuff together on these uh, super speedways as Tom Wilson makes a move to the inside. He throws the block and uh, Louis Ballard is now leading here at 8 Bull over the uh, Johnson Racing Super Speedway Armada. Frank Azzaretto had a tire go down from uh, about 30th place, so he is now a lap down. Barbara Burt, oh, we've got a car blowing up in the back. We'll see who that is in a second. But Barbara Burt is uh, looking to defend her win here. She won in 2014. Unfortunately, we weren't, be we weren't able to show you that win. Uh, but Barbara Burt now is uh, looking to defend. She's got Mark Burt up there to help her and uh, running up in the top 10 at this moment. Kyuga Hakai. Oh, no. 
just horrible circumstances for the 77 team. Uh, Hakai has had the speed, but he just hasn't had the luck to complete a run. Uh, it's happened multiple times this season. It's going to happen again here today as Alex Phillips goes high. And oh, that was a... He just door slammed the 8 car. I'm not sure why he did that. I think the officials are going to want to have a word with him about that, but that's allowed Kale Burnfart Jr. to get by Louis Ballard and take over the lead. Brian Gallagher up to third place and using the lessons taught to him by his daddy. Oh, I wish Kale Burnfart Sr. could have been here to see this, but Kale Burnfart Jr. leading at a super speedway. I'm getting shades of the 90s just looking at this. Kale Burnfart Sr. used to dominate every single super speedway race that he ran in the 90s, and we're getting some shades of that with here. Uh, with his son here today, uh, Kale Burnfart Jr. taking over the lead. As we've got the second pack here, this is Kelly Blackwater leading the second pack. Uh, this is about 18th on back to about 25th or so. And this is the second pack, it's about 25th on back into the mid 30s. Uh, Scott Wallen leading this pack, and you can see some. Uh, oh, looked like. Uh, Alina Lazarevo was in that pack as Ben Worthington in the second pack hits the wall and he's going to drop back. Uh, Worthington was having a decent run and uh, Lucas Motorsports is in the relegation zone and they need every single point they can get at this point and uh, that's going to be a blow to them as uh, looks like uh, Ian Elias hits the wall. So something might be wrong with these Paloma Autosport cars as that's the second car to hit the wall and he's just stuck up against it. Uh, looking like the same thing that happened to uh, Lenny Jacobs earlier on. He is still stuck on the wall. Wow. What was that? Uh, oh, there's a caution. Uh, looked like uh, that was the third pack when they caught up to uh, Ian Elias. That was Josh Marshall getting involved, Scott Wallen, and uh, John Jefferson just got into the back of him, and that's going to take Jefferson out of it early on. What was that? They just uh, looked like uh, he just checked up and that threw Jefferson into the wall. Oh, what happened here? Ike Durbin comes into the pits, getting service, getting fuel only. And uh, when he pulls out, he gets hit by Alina Lazerva. He's going to run into the back of James Hewitt, and that's going to cause the left rear quarter panel to fall off of Hewitt's car. And that's going to be the end of the race for Ike Durbin, as it looked like they patched that left rear quarter panel back on Hewitt's car really quick. They just threw some tape on and that he's going to keep going and he's going to stay up to speed as Greg Woodard uh, managed to win the race off of pit road with Kurt Pliskin in second as Greg Woodard. Uh, Accelerator Motorsports has been pretty awful all season. This is a bright spot for them and I, hopefully they can stay up near the front and uh, get themselves out of this relegation zone that they're in right now as uh, we're starting to get some unfamiliar faces up front due to some interesting pit strategy. As Alex Phillips now is uh, way back. He's all the way back in... Oh! Something's gone wrong with the 71 car. It sounds like he's having... He's down on power. That's an engine failure. As Alex Phillips is going to drop out of the race on lap 29 of 80, and that is just a heartbreak for that team. They were running very well as Barney Ward here Oh, uh, he's going to hit the wall. Barney Ward up against the wall coming out of turn number four. He's going to shoot down the track. As, uh, oh, looks like Barry Juvenal is running a bit wide. Uh, that's a huge accident. Caution number two is out on lap 30. As, let's see what happened there. Oh, my goodness. Was that a pit wall? I think we just had a pit wall here at uh, New York Auto Ring. We're going to go on board with Barry Juvenal. What? Why was he committed to that line? Because he dove in and... Oh my goodness, that was a huge hit for Ryan Matthews in the 0-2. What on... Why did he do that? Here's a static camera, and you can see there, he just tried to make it back in line, and... That... Oh, goodness me. That was a huge hit for Matthews and Juveno. Neither driver were cleared from the infield carousel, and now Kale Burnfart Jr. is broken down. That car is done for the day. As you can see, the smoke pouring out of the hood. And it uh, looks like James Hewitt, who is going to take over the lead, is having engine problems too. So a uh, bunch of contenders are starting to drop by the wayside. As uh, Hewitt pulling into the pits, tough break for him. He, he was uh, an early contender for the championship as Duncan Cobb 
has taken over the lead on some pit strategy. Mark Burt making a move on the inside there uh, to take the lead as Double B Motorsports has actually been traditionally strong at this track. Um, considering they've only competed here once, they won in their race. So Mark Burt is up here. That, and I think that's Matt Brinson back there in the top 10. So we're, yes, Matt Brinson is running up in 10th place in this 1998 Monte Carlo. So he's doing a fantastic job early on. Uh, he also did very well at Chicago, so uh, any top teams out there who need a driver, look at this guy, Matt Brinson. Look what he's doing in 20, almost 20 year old equipment and seeing he's put this car up in the top 10, so uh, if you ever need a driver, give Matt Brinson a call. I'm sure he'll do a good job for you. Just past halfway and Preston Bell, who's been struggling all day, is going to blow up. Uh, he is running a lap down and had some damage from earlier on. Uh, under the first pit stop, he got some uh, hood damage, and his car has just struggled for speed ever since, and this engine failure, which we've had a lot of engine failures lately, is just a mercy kill at this point. Tom Wilson cracking the top 10 once again. Uh, he drove from the back. He didn't have the best pit strategy under caution. He uh, actually took four tires and fuel, unlike most of the field, but Barney Ward has tandemed with him up towards the front. Uh, Matt Brinson's going to drop out of the top 10 with that, but they are surging very quickly towards the lead pack up there. And uh, another driver who's having a really good run is actually Gaspar D'Souza, who is the third uh, place driver in points. And he's running in eighth place right now. You see Tom Wilson back there really bridging that gap. Uh, just shocking how fast the Johnson racing cars are here today as Sapphire Anderson having an awesome run as well. She's up in fifth place as Australian Motorsports, not really known for their super speedway prowess, but uh, Sapphire Anderson is really proving that they have something here today as look at Tom Wilson just slicing through the field. His car has really come to life. Uh, looks like four tires uh, might have been the correct choice. Mark Burt leading with uh, Brian Gallagher there in second and Sapphire Anderson is going to move up to third actually around Barbara Burt with a push from Wilson as they're starting to get some lap traffic in the form of Wollen and uh, Chris Benson there and now we're getting uh, it took it took them this long uh, but Ramsey Cockner is finally going a lap down on lap 53. This is actually an improvement. Uh, I believe he went a lap down at Talladega around lap 20 or so. Might have been even earlier than that. So it looks like even Nice Cock Racing stepped it up. Looks like some... Uh, oh, oh no, that's caution number three uh, here on lap number... Uh, Lap number 53, and that's going to be the end of the day for... Oh, that was another car getting shot up into the wall, uh, going on board with Ben Worthington. It looks like Azaretto just hooked his teammate coming into turn number three. What was that about? As Lambert's going to go out of the race, and... Oh, that's a huge hit. Uh, looks like Worthington got hit by someone. We're going to take a look and see who that was here, but Worthington is definitely out of it. Okay, Ian Elias going on board with him. Let's see what he saw, and... He committed to the bottom and just nowhere for him to go. He plowed into Worthington. And that's going to be the end of the day for Worthington, Elias, Lambert. And I think Azaretto is going to drop out too. As let's take a look at here and see. Oh, looked like Lambert just checked up for something. Maybe Greg Woodard cut him off. But that just looked like a racing deal. I was going to call that one on Azaretto. But not even one lap after we went green. Ben Atkins hooks. Uh, oh my goodness, that was a catch fence by Lenny Jacobs. And that's going to take both of them out of the race, not even one lap after we went green. Uh, that was an unnecessarily violent accident as Brian Gallagher continues to lead on the restart now. Uh, he took the lead over from Mark Burt and uh, Louis Ballard there in second place, and that's a pretty big gap that they've put on the field. Barney Ward there running in third place having a really strong run as well. Uh, he hasn't had many strong runs here uh, in the PCC Cup Series as of late, as uh, he's continuing to run there in third place. Uh, Brian Gallagher really having a strong run, as Joe Craig is also having a strong run. Uh, remember what I said before about Lucas Motorsports? Oh, we've got a car blowing up. That's Barney Ward. Barney Ward is blowing up from third place, as uh, the engine builders, I guess, were really not expecting uh, the speeds and the temperatures that we we're going to get here today as Barney Ward pulls high. He's holding up quite a bit of the field and uh, just really emblematic of Ward's season. He had one strong run earlier in the year at uh, Surfer's Paradise, but has just really struggled ever since. And this is the lead pack. You can just see how much that stringed everything out as uh, Brian Gallagher has opened up over the rest of the field. There's uh, Barbara Burt in second place. 
Uh, can't even see third in these shots, but here comes Tom Wilson going to take... The, well, he is using the apron. Tom Wilson just shot down to the apron, and he took the lead using that. So uh, Wilson really going into do, for, do or die mode right now, trying to take over this win, and it looks like it's between just five cars. 31, 49, 366, 39, and 8 up at the front of the field. Joe Craig, I mentioned before, was having a strong run. He is the leader of the second pack. He's in, he is in sixth place. Uh, and I, Sapphire Anderson making a move on the inside, but at this rate, this second pack is not going to catch up to the leaders. And uh, believe it or not, there are still two nice cock racing cars running on the lead lap. Jerry Myatt and Daniel Sharp have been running nose to tail all race, and uh, somehow they've kept up enough speed to not go a lap down, so uh, props to Nicecock Racing for actually uh, keeping their cars on uh, on pace for once here at a super speedway. Tom Wilson continuing to extend the lead as uh, this two-car tandem with him and Gallagher is really working out. Corridovos and Ballard have not had uh, the chance to gain any momentum on them, so it looks like it's going to be between Gallagher and uh, Wilson at this point for the win unless uh, Corridovos and uh, Ballard find some momentum. Another driver who's been surging lately is Akio Gifu, who uh, actually had a second place finish at Chicago and now looking for another really good run here today. Making a move on the inside of Sapphire Anderson for sixth place, but uh, Greg Woodard's gonna take advantage of that. Woodard's having a very strong run as well. Uh, actually, look at all those Accelerator Motorsports cars up there in the top 10. This is gonna be a great day for them if they can keep their nose out of trouble. Uh, Nicholas Corodovos took two tires on that last uh, pit stop, and he is reporting that a right front tire is starting to go down on that 39 car. You can see him dropping back. Oh yeah, that tire is going flat. He's going to try and bring it into the pits, trying to commit to the apron. He's going to clip the apron. He's going to slide up the track, losing control, and that's going to bring out the caution. Oh no. Oh no, Corodovos, what were you doing? This is going to send us to a green-white checkered. We uh, The caution came out with just two laps to go. As good avoidance by Barbara Burt, though. Uh, that's gonna put uh, this race into a green-white checkered as Tom Wilson brings the field down to the end of regulation. And what is the pace car doing? Uh, did the pace car just pit well? Well, it looks like we got a different pace car this time, but Tom Wilson's gonna lead the field to the green flag for a green-white checkered attempt. Louis Ballard making a move to the inside already as we're three and four wide throughout the field. Look at this. Look at this racing here, as it uh, looks like we've got an incident in the back already. Uh, but Tom Wilson getting uh, a push from Akio Gifu, but Louis Ballard getting a shove from Dan Ferre, Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer, Barbara Burt there on the inside. Barbara Burt uh, is going to commit to her teammate, though, Akio Gifu, as, uh, oh, Akio Gifu leaves uh, Tom Wilson for dead as Louis Ballard starts to fall back. Uh, Gifu and uh, Burt on the bottom working together with uh, Greg Woodard there, and Accelerator Motorsports cars all in the top six. Look at that. As uh, Gifu leads, coming to the white flag, Gifu through the block on Wilson. Wilson's going to give uh, Gifu a push, trying to get around. And uh, looking there on the high side, Barbara Burt still hanging in there with uh, Greg Woodard. Dan Ferre also in tow. As uh, I think, uh, oh, there's Wheat Farmer too, as uh, Pliskin started to check back. But, oh! Uh, Gifu didn't block low as Barbara Burt's going to take advantage of this side by side through turn number three, coming through turn number four. Barbara Burt getting a shove from Dan Ferre. Uh, looks like the high side's got the momentum though, as it's. Oh, we've got a huge accident that's uh, Wheat Farmer. But coming to the finish, Barbara Burt is going to take the win over Akio Gifu by just over a bumper, as uh, Burt is going to go back to back as we're going to take a look at that finish. Uh, just so, so close. Three one hundredths of a second, the margin of victory by Barbara Burt over her teammate Akio Gifu, who is going to finish second two weeks in a row. Okay, this is the first incident that we had. That's uh, Matt Brinson involved, Mark Burt, just a uh, bunch of cars that really didn't need this. Alina Lazarevo was in it. And that's Jerry Myatt going for a roll. At, he actually drove that car away and would complete the first lap. Uh, Daniel Sharp was in it. And uh, taking a look at that last lap incident, uh, Louis Ballard just dumped Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer. What was that? Uh, looked like Duncan Cobb got a piece of that as well, but Louis Ballard just drove it into the pits. He knew that he, he was done. 
as Duncan Cobb uh, got a hit on the roof by his teammate there, and uh, Josh Marshall got a piece of that after the end of the race. That was a pretty big hit that Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer took at the end, uh, and uh, Duncan Cobb took a pretty big one to the roof, too. Taking a look at the results, uh, Akio Gifu second place, Tom Wilson got a very good run in third place, but unfortunately couldn't seal the deal. Dan Foray, Greg Woodard, Kurt Pliskin, fourth, fifth, seventh, very strong effort for Accelerator Motorsports. They really needed a good run here today. Uh, Brian Gallagher in 6th place there, Tom Delgado sneaks into the top 10 once again, and kids are going to eat free as Kelly Blackwater finished ninth place, uh, sponsored by Golden Corral, kids are going to eat free there. Gaspar D'Souza continues his strong championship effort with a 10th place finish, Sapphire Anderson in 11th, Duncan Cobb 12th despite crossing the line after getting hit on the roof by his teammate Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer who actually crossed the line in 15th, Marshall Ballard. Joe Craig was involved in that uh, initial scuffle, but drove away and finished a few seconds behind the leader. And everyone from 17th on down did not finish. Uh, Daniel Sharp, Matt Brinson, uh, Jerry Might, and Mark Burt round out the top 20. And now looking at the points, Ike Durbin continues to hold the championship lead, but due to his early exit, his lead has dropped down to only 19 points over Gaspar D'Souza, who has taken over second spot. Uh, GDS looking to make a good championship run here this year. As Hank Jr. Wheat Farmer drops down to third place, Brian Gallagher in fourth, Kelly Blackwater up to fifth place in the championship standings. Didn't expect to see that at all this season. Lenny Jacobs drops down to sixth. Uh, Tom Delgado continuing to be the model of consistency in seventh place. Alex Phillips in eighth. James Hewitt dropping down to ninth place. John Jefferson in tenth place. Uh, did not have a very strong run tied with Barbara Burt there for tenth. Uh, Sapphire Anderson in twelfth. Duncan Cobb thirteenth. Nicholas Corradovos did not make it to the green-white checkered. Uh, fell two laps down in the pits, but did take the checkered flag. Uh, so 14th in points for Corridovos, Mark Burt in 15th. Andy Lambert did not have a strong run and finished in 16th in points uh, after this race. Daniel Sharp and Jerry Myatt, representing Nice Cock Racing in uh, the top 20 in 17th and 18th. Ben Atkins and Ian Elias rounds out the top 20 in points. And finally, looking at the team points, Paloma Autosport leads Manicor Engineering by 7 points at the top of the table. And it's 100 points back from 2nd to 3rd, with Double B taking over the 3rd spot. Looks like we've definitely got a dogfight for 3rd place. And uh, it's, a, it's very close uh, from 3rd uh, on down to about 8th, uh, honestly. Uh, good battle for ninth going on, and Accelerator Motorsports leaps out of relegation with that run, going from 14th to 11th in one race, Stefan's Racing falling from 11th to 14th. 